typically when you're buying a home, a conventional loan is a little bit stronger than a FHA loan. Andrew, what's a concurrent closing? So concurrent closing is when you already own a home and you're in the process of selling it and buying another one. And so, you know, depending on the market, sellers are always kind of thinking what's best to do is to look for the replacement home first or to focus on selling their home. And really right now in this market, it's a seller's market, which means the likelihood of getting a buyer is pretty um, strong. And so I would recommend anyone considering uh, selling a home and buying a home uh, at the same time to to lock in your buyer first. And so what that means is well, you're gonna have to compete most likely on when you put an offer. And so if someone's offering on a home without having to sell, in theory, that's gonna be a stronger offer. But if you already have a buyer um, locked in and it's gonna be buying your home, that's, that's actually really, really good. And so, um, that's what you want to do is you want to line up the buyer in your home first and your your offer is still going to be contingent on the sale of your home because that's where your proceeds are coming from for the down payment but the likelihood of that happening is, is very strong okay so so if i were like um i own one house and i want to go buy another house i know in the market people have been you know having trouble like it's like oh, oh, if i sell my house like well wh where do i go like all the houses are getting snatched up like mm -hmm. um which creates this like interesting like paradox in within the right. market so basically you would recommend me to get a buyer from my current house that i own right and then go out and find another house correct got it and then another thing that's very common is basically your request for a, a possible rent back so you would sell your home you'd cash out your proceeds and then for maybe a month or two you would pay that person rent for the home that you're already in while you're trying to complete the purchase on your home so you don't necessarily need to have a home um, in contract at the same time, but the likelihood of you um, getting your offer accepted when needing to sell your home, is gonna be a little harder. So if let's say you sold your home and you cashed out, now you can do a rent back. And then when you put an offer on the next home, you would not be contingent on the sale since you already completed the sale. So that'll put you in a better position. Okay, uh, could you give like an example? Well, the example would be um, rather than having to uh, complete the sale of your home, right, before you can buy the next one. So let's say, uh, let's say the buyer in your home at the last minute lost his job, right? So he had to cancel the, the, the purchase. Mm -hmm. Well, in theory, it's putting you in a position that you have to cancel your purchase now because you don't have the money, right? right. To close on the next house. Right. But if you if you were able to sell your home completely mm -hmm. and then have the option to stay there for two months and pay right. rent, right? Got it. Um, so now you have all your money that you need to buy the next house. So when you put in the offer, you would be leaving out the part that is contingent on the sale of your home. Mm -hmm. So now you're eliminating a, a portion of risk to that new that new um, seller. Yeah, like when you put your offer in, does that tend to help an offer? Like, is it strengthen the offer or how's that? Um, what, have, what have you seen? There's just different layers to it. So that just adds another layer of um, of risk, I would say. So a typical first time buyer, it's, it's they use an FHA loan and a lot of listing agents are a little, it's getting better, but they used to be kind of weary about those. And the reason why is just because those banks tend to be a little bit more conservative on the, the appraisals since the bank is fronting almost all the money. Hmm. And also, um, you know, those people typically are right on the edge of qualifying. So, you know, they're buying their first home, they're scraping up, you know, they're scraping up all their pennies, they've been working on their credit. Um, you know, they're, they're getting everything in order to buy a home, which is great, but sometimes they're barely qualifying. Hmm. So if anything were to change, let's say the rates go up a little bit, it changes their debt to income ratio. Um, 
you know, maybe the underwriter uh, calculates their income a little different, you know, and they don't qualify. You know, there's just different factors. And so typically when you're buying a home, a conventional loan is a little bit stronger than a FHA loan. And then, you know, in some cases you have an all cash offer. And in this market, what we're seeing is even though it's an all cash offer, they're still offering full price or more. So it's not like they're asking for a discount. Mm -hmm. So that's going to be another layer. Um, the other thing that's happening a lot right now is a waiver of contingency on uh, inspections and even appraisals. So let's say, for example, <clears throat> your home appraised at 500,000 but I offered you 520,000. So what that contingency uh, removal means is that I'm willing to pay 520,000. And so they have to come out of pocket the extra 20,000. Hmm. So we are seeing that in today's market. When theoretically when more houses come back on the market, um, the sellers won't have as strong of a hand or, or, uh, or you know, a little more power sh should shift back to the buyer. It should, uh, yeah. it should theoretically, but we don't know. Yeah. We, don't, we don't know what's going to happen. Um, yeah, that's super interesting. So for concurrent closings, um, what success stories have you seen for concurrent closings? Have you seen a concurrent closing um, work before? They do, but they, they have different layers of, how do you say it? it? Just everyone's timing is different, right? Yeah. So depending on the house that you're, I mean, I've seen like multiple concurrent closings at the same time, which means, you know, like you're buying a house, but that person's buying a house and they're all occupied and everyone has is on different timetables, you know what I mean? Yeah. And so, yeah, it's just, it takes a lot more planning involved uh, when you're doing concurrent closings, you know? Mm -hmm. So whenever there's a vacant house and it's a first time buyer, that's usually a slam dunk. You know, no one's waiting on the house to be available. And as soon as it closes, the buyer can move in. But let's say uh, we had one, for example, where the seller was retiring, right, mm -hmm. from um, a county job and they're moving out of state. But I guess part of the requirement was she was finishing out her um, vacation time. So because she was retiring, she was cashing out her vacation, which meant she kind of had to stay local for some reason. Like she couldn't leave the state. Because she couldn't, um, she couldn't, because she's cashing out her vacation time. So. Something like that. Yeah, it was interesting. So basically she had to stay there for a while um and so my buyer you know bought the home but then she, you know people were waiting on her home to move into and so it was like this multiple step of everyone's trying to move but people are being held up by one person you know so it sounds like concurrent closing it's uh it could be tricky but it can be done it can be done yeah it can be done it happens all the time awesome Awesome. Well, what advice would you give someone if um, they're thinking about, you know, if that's going to be their situation, like a con concurrent closing? Well, the first thing, like any like any other purchase, is getting pre um, I say, getting pre approved and knowing how much proceeds you need from the sale to qualify, um, because. You know, a lot of people think right away, oh, if I'm selling a house, I'm going to qualify, qualify for the next house. Well, there's more to it than just down payment. You know, you still have to look at your income and your other debts. Um, you know, so put, putting 20% down on a home is great, but you still have to qualify for the payment. Hmm. So that's always the first step. That's super interesting. Yeah, I, I, I wouldn't think that either. I would just, yeah. you know, it's like I have a five hundred thousand dollar house. Of course, I could buy a another five hundred thousand dollar house. Yeah, or, or like a, a six hundred thousand dollar house. It's like not not that much more, you know. Yeah. Um, it happens all the time with uh, people that rent. So people that rent, let's say they're paying $3,000 a month in rent yeah. and they think, oh, I'll be able to buy a house. No problem because I'm affording this $3,000 rent. Mm -hmm. And so once they look at their, all their finances and their liabilities, they might only qualify to buy a house for 2,400. But mm -hmm. sometimes that kind of upsets the, the buyers because they feel like, well, we've been paying 3,000 all along. Why can't we buy something for at least 3,000? But it just depends on the, on the, yeah, how much you qualify for. Yep. That's super interesting. It's like, where's that other 600 going? No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's like a math equation. Awesome. Okay, cool. Cool. Um, 
yeah anything else you want to share about concurrent closings um no it's just part of the process you know yeah. and um so communication is always really important letting everyone know you know what the timetable looks like and that way everyone can plan accordingly to it yeah no that's good that's good cool thanks for sharing some info about concurrent closings yeah you're welcome yeah cool Thanks for watching my video. To learn more tips and tricks how to save money or make money in any real estate market, please like and subscribe. Uh, my goal is to keep giving you valuable content that you can use. Any questions, please comment. Thank you.